So Brown versus Board of Education was a landmark Supreme Court decision in 1954 that struck down separate but equal schooling. Um, and that's one of those cases where we all look back and go, wow, good. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, it took long enough, but OK, we got the right decision at some point. Well, Trump judicial nominee Wendy Vitter was asked what she thinks about that decision by Senator Blumenthal. And the result is cringeworthy. Do you believe that Brown versus Board of Education was correctly decided? Senator, I don't mean to be coy, but I think I get into a, a difficult, um, a different, difficult area when I start commenting on Supreme Court decisions which are correctly decided and which I may disagree with. Again, my personal political or religious views, I would set aside. That is Supreme Court precedent. It is binding. If I were honored to be confirmed, I would be bound by it, and of course I would uphold it. Do you believe it was correctly decided? And again, I would respectfully um, not comment on what could be my boss's ruling, the Supreme Court. I would be bound by it. And if I start commenting on I agree with this case or don't agree with this case, I think we get into a slippery slope. Here's how you answer that question. Do you think Brown versus Board of Education was correctly decided? Yes. That's it. That's it. You know when you give a word salad? When you don't think it was correctly decided. Um, these uh, Not enough is made of how extremely radical Republican appointments to federal courts are. I mean, these people are insanely radical because the argument she's making is for a legal principle that basically federal law does not override state law. So states can run wild and do whatever they want. Now, in some instances, you could say, oh, that has a positive outcome. Like on marijuana, for example, oh, let the states do what they want and the federal government shouldn't get involved. It is true that if you let the states get away with whatever they wanted, then yeah, on marijuana, we would be much more evolved. However, usually these Republican appointees are massive hypocrites. And on issues like marijuana, they go, no, 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 you should listen to the federal government. Uh, but historically, that argument was used to try to prop up the white bigoted status quo in the South pre the civil uh, rights, pre the passage of the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. So in other words, the argument from the states, a lot, many people don't know this unless you studied pl uh, political science history and in modern American history specifically. The argument from the South wasn't, hey, listen, we would like to continue to keep our apartheid system and we would like to continue to be racist. They didn't say anything. They put the, all the race arguments on the back burner and the arguments they made were for a legal principle of keep the big bad federal government out of our states where we have the freedom to make our own decisions and make our own rules. So that was the argument they made. They didn't say anything about race. They said we have the right to craft our own laws in our state here and the big bad tyrannical federal government is trying to impose their will on us when we're a free state. So that was the legal argument being made. What she's alluding to here, she's not saying it because she knows how unpalatable it would be if she just came out and, sa and said it. But in her philosophy, she's like, yes. If southern states, for example, wanted to say, oh, did you just pass a universal background check for gun purchases? Did you just ban high capacity magazines? We don't agree. We're going to allow high capacity magazines. We're going to skirt the universal background check. That's what she wants. She wants states to have the ability to nullify federal law, which renders federal law irrelevant. Let's say, for example, we pass, we finally get Medicare for all and we get it at a federal level, as opposed to having a law passed where each individual state has to set up their own Medicare for all state system, for example. Um, under this logic, then states would have the right to say, oh, the federal government passed a law that says we need Medicare for all. We disagree. We're just not going to pay into the system, and we're not going to set up the system here. Tough cookies. Well, then the federal government's irrelevant. <laughs> it's irrelevant, and we're back to the Articles of Confederation, basically. 
So that's an extreme mindset, man. A lot of these Republicans, the, the, the ones who are appointed to positions as federal judges, they are extreme. Some of them want to go back to the Lochner era of the Supreme Court. There was a time when it was interpreted by the Supreme Court that the Constitution gave everybody a right to contract. So what that means is you're allowed to draft whatever contract you want, doesn't matter how extreme it is, and it's, it, can, it has to be free from federal government intervention. So in other words... That argument, that system, that ideology, those court rulings were used to prop up, for example, wage slavery. So, you know, now we have fed the federal, federal minimum wage laws and child labor laws, for example. Now, you could argue, hey, the minimum wage is too low. I agree, it is. But we have a federal minimum wage and nobody could pay less than the federal minimum wage. Back during the Lochner era of the court, they said, no. If you want to get into a contract with somebody, let's say you're an immigrant, you just came over here, and you want to go work at the butcher's, uh, you know, store, and you craft a, a contract where the butcher says, oh, you barely speak English, but you want to work here, and oh, great, I'm going to be nice to you, and I'm going to give you a contract of five cents an hour. Now, let's say, for argument's sake, that if you account for inflation, that equals $3.50 an hour today, okay? Today, because we now have struck down the Lochner error rulings, the idea of right to contract, the federal government can step in and say, no, you're exploiting that worker. You have to at least pay them the minimum wage. At least. Oh, you want to hire a child? Too bad. We're not going to let you. Under the right to contract ideology, they say, no, the government cannot interject in contracts under any circumstances. So in other words, you could have an exploitative owner of a business, CEO, take advantage of a child, take advantage of a worker in the most extreme ways possible, forcing them to work 70 hours a week when they don't want to work 70 hours a week, having no safety regulations at all in the business. And that was all perfectly legal and constitutional. These are the kinds of people that Republicans are appointing to federal judges all across the country. And it is absolutely terrifying and you're seeing how terrifying it is right here because listen she can't just say it who the f you can't just say it yeah brown versus board of education was wrong i'm pro segregation she can't say it but that's where her sympathies lie so she bullshits <laughs> well see what had happened was i wouldn't want to comment on the comment of the thing that just, oh shut we know what she's in favor of she's in favor of states nullifying federal law she, which would mean we'd still be fucking dealing with segregation to this day until the states voluntarily decided to get rid of it, which good luck with that. Have you been to Mississippi? So, here we are. That's an insane video, man. But this is where we're at today.